All right, so here we are at the 40 gallon an hour system. Mike, what can you tell me about this system? This system is our uh, modular 40 gallon per hour system. We call it modular because it's just pieces, parts and pieces that you can mount anywhere you have space. Uh, the biggest component of this system is this distance from here to here. It measures 43 inches, including these 90 degree elbows. Uh, these elbows are available in straight or 90s depending on how much space you have. So you're saying this can be a straight hose, doesn't have to come off? This hose doesn't have to come out pointing this direction. It could go look just like the white one. Okay. So with these membranes, they are a little bit longer. Can I mount these vertically, horizontally? Does it really matter? Absolutely. You can mount these membranes at any angle. It doesn't have to be horizontal like you see them here. It could be on a 45 or on a 90 degree straight up and down. Whatever saves uh, space and works for your boat. So this system we have, it comes with a panel. Do you need the panel to make water? The panel, you don't need the panel. The, all the panel does, it consolidates all these gauges on a eight by eight now. This is the older version. This was a 10 by 10. Now we compacted everything together and it measures eight by eight inches and it requires about three inches in the back. So this, this system does about 40 gallons an hour. Um, we have everything we have in the panel, our breakers, our, our gauges, our flow meter, and our pressure regulator. These are all the same components pretty much on all of our systems. The same components except the two switches okay. that you do not get unless you buy the panel. Okay. Everything else is included with every system. So how do I wire this with my boat with the panel versus not having the panel? Uh, so the only thing you don't have is the switches, so you have to use your existing breaker panel to power the system on and off. If you have the panel, then you run power here and you can control the high pressure pump from this switch and the low pressure pump, or what we call boost pump, with this switch on the left. So what is the power consumption on this unit? The power consumption is 1000 watts, so you can run it off your handheld generator or your inverter. How often can I run my system? You can run the system as often as you want. The more you run it, the better off you are. What is the easiest way to pickle or preserve this system when we're, we're, we're done with the season, we're gonna put the boat away, maybe the boat's going up on the hard, or maybe it's going to a cold place and we're not sailing in below 20 degrees temperatures. So what do we do to preserve this system? Uh, you buy the preservative from seawaterpro.com. You mix 20% of the preservative in a bucket Take this hose, dip it in the bucket, turn on the high pressure pump with the zero, the zero all the way, uh, the pressure all the way down to zero. And when the bucket is empty, you're pickled. Okay. And I notice on our panel, we have this monitor here. Uh, what is this monitor for? This is the TDS monitor, also found in our old panel. It shows you the total dissolved solids. Basically, it's the quality of the water. Okay. And uh, FDA recommends uh, drinking water to be up to 500 total dissolved solids parts in parts per million. Okay, so I could run this system without a diverter valve, but tell me how a diverter valve might make my life a little bit easier. Well, you don't really need a diverter valve. Uh, if you're rinsing your system properly, and the water doesn't smell, then mm -hmm. there is a very small amount of water that is, let's say, slightly over 500 parts per million. Uh, and uh, it's a lot smaller amount in, uh, when you use a Seawater Pro because we have the patented pressure regulator. You can leave it at 800 PSI, which is where the normal operating pressure is, and just flip a switch on. So we can, we, you nearly instantly go from zero to 800 PSI by therefore making good water in a very short amount of time. Now, if you want the optional diverter valve, it is available for purchase, but it's not necessary. Uh, another reason why it's not necessary is because we use all the push to connect fittings. You can just push back on this O-ring and pull the hose out. So you could have a, a spare hose set aside just for pickling and you don't need a diverter valve at all. You don't need a diverter valve. You, said you can just pull the hose out when you need to okay. get rid of some water. Okay, and just like our other systems, this has the uh, freshwater uh, rinse, correct? Timer is included with every system. There is not an extra purchase. All right. Um, so Mike, what are the consumable parts with this system? What is some of the maintenance or replacements that I'm going to have to expect when I buy this system? Sure. 
The, uh, the number one consumable is the, uh, the pre-filters. They're available on, on our website or you can purchase them on Amazon. It is a standard size filter, which is two and a half diameter by 10 inches tall. And they're very inexpensive. Uh, we recommend you change these on condition. Just, uh, you can look at it. If, if it doesn't look very appetizing, then chances are you want to replace it. Or you can also, if you notice a drop in pressure, let's say you're typically running at 15 PSI, all of a sudden you notice you're down to five it is time to replace your filters. Okay, and it's probably safe to say that the life expectancy of my pre-filters are really going to rely on how often I use it and where I'm making water. That is absolutely true. If you're on the ICW or in a marina, you will be replacing these a lot frequently, maybe once a week in a marina okay. versus once every month or two in the Bahamas. Are these expensive since I'm gonna have to have a couple sets extra? On They're the about three to five dollars a piece, depending okay. on where you get them. It's very cheap. Um, so with this, we have our brine line, just like the other panel. Um, this goes overboard. Yes, our brine line is what you see here. Okay. This would be a, a, the included through hole that you get with every system. This is what it looks like from the outside of your boat. And the brine line is what carries the salt that, again, these are salt separators. They're called membranes, but they really separate the water from the salt. Uh, the fresh water comes in out this pipe, the salty water comes out this pipe. So when I rinse or flush my system, uh, all of that water should be going through the brine hose, correct? Nothing is gonna get that sent is, to my tank accidentally. That is correct. If, and if anything goes into your tank, it's already filtered, mm -hmm. so it's not gonna be bad. Uh, but when the timer turns on, the water comes out the, uh, the, uh, over the uh, brine hose and it goes overboard. So I get this question a lot. What happens if I'm making water and my rinse timer kicks on while I'm making water? What's gonna happen? Nothing is gonna happen. You're gonna keep making water. You're not gonna notice anything. It's not gonna affect anything whatsoever. Okay, so nothing I have to keep an eye on. Nothing. Okay. So Mike, I noticed that some of our systems have one membrane and some have two. Why have two? What's an advantage? Well, first off, it's a great deal. When you buy the second membrane, you only pay $500 more for the membrane. Uh, but really what advantage, the advantage is that you have redundancy on your system. Let's say something goes overboard or for somehow we sucked up some diesel, somebody was taking a shower using a lot of hair conditioner, got dissolved in the water and ends up in the membranes, chances are we're gonna harm a membrane or both. But uh, if, if, uh, if you disconnect, let's say one membrane went bad, you can just pull this line and uh, now you're back to making water from one membrane. So the redundancy uh, of having two membranes will bring you home without having to search for a membrane when you're out in the Bahamas in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so we have redundancy with two membranes. Uh, what is the electrical load of, you know, adding a second membrane? Does it, is it more efficient? Is, you know, how does that work? That's another popular question. Uh, what happens is when you add the second membrane, nothing changes as far as the electrical circuit goes. We're still drawing a thousand watts, just like with one membrane, but now we have two membranes. And at a thousand watts now, we're making 40 gallons an hour versus 20 gallons an hour with a single membrane system. All right, while we're on the page talking about power, I noticed we sell an AC and a DC system. Why or what should I go for if I'm not really sure if I want AC or DC? That is true, that is true. Uh, that is another very popular question. Uh, I would recommend you that if you have the power, go with the AC system. The AC motor is a brushless motor. It uh, virtually lasts forever. Uh, the brushed DC motor has brushes and it has a limited life expectancy. So especially if you're a uh, liveaboard that you plan to use the system a lot, I would highly recommend you go with the AC instead of the DC. Second advantage is that the uh, DC system is limited to a single membrane, okay. where the AC is double membrane. Your wiring is a lot thinner with an AC because the voltage is higher, so you don't need heavy, heavy gauge wires. And of course the efficiency, uh, when you have a DC system like a 12 volt at 600 watts, you're producing 17 gallons an hour versus a thousand watt, you make 40 gallons an hour. Okay. Uh, all you need is a 3000 watt inverter to start the motor. And after that, it's a thousand watts. Now I have a, a couple buddies of mine that run no fossil fuels, uh, fuels and strictly solar power. Can I run a water maker off strictly solar power? Mm, absolutely, you can. Uh, all you need is an inverter. Okay. Make sure your batteries can handle the amp load. Okay. 
And our boost pump over here, this is a uh, DC pump. This is a DC brushless 12 to 24 volt pump okay. that you can run from your battery, 12 or 24 volts, or you can use a transformer and go from 110 you're using 120 AC, you can uh, transform it down to 24 volts and operate this boost pump. Does this boost pump need to be below waterline? Is there any special specifications? That is true, yes. It does have to be below the waterline because it's a centrifugal pump. All centrifugal pumps without exception, without exception have to be below the waterline. Otherwise, they will not prime. Once they lose prime above the waterline, they will not suck the water. So you install these pumps below the water line, just like you see here. Now, how far can I install this, this boost pump from the through hole strainer? It, uh, typically, you want that distance to be as short as possible. Okay. And then this, there is no limit to how long this hose. Okay. And I noticed on uh, our website, we have different types of pumps. We have stainless, we have plated. What do you recommend? I personally like the plated pump. It is cheaper. Uh, when the pump gets damaged, uh, if something goes, gets into the pump, whether you have a stainless pump or a plated pump, it will get damaged. Just the same. Uh, the beauty of a plated pump is you take the whole pump, you throw it away and you buy a new one for about $495. Where this pump is so expensive, you have to try to overhaul it. And uh, from experience in the field, overhauls do not turn out to be as good as a brand new pump. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty rough on my boat. I'm a heavy sailor, I'm out every day. What is the warranty like on this system if something happens to my boat? The warranty covers everything except the membranes for two years. Everything in that, that includes um, hoses, hoses, fittings, timers, pumps, motors, pressure regulators, TDS monitors, switches, flow meters, boost pump. Everything is covered except the membranes because the membranes are subject to abuse. Okay, and if I wanted to get my, my panel, for instance, 30 feet away from the rest of everything else that's set up uh, permanently, can I get custom made hoses and what would that cost me? Absolutely. The hose that is included with every kit is six feet long. Uh, we can make these hoses and we have uh, 20, 30 feet long. There is no limit to how long this hose can be. Okay. Um, our membranes here, these look like to be some kind of resin. What is the, what is the pressure that these hold? Because I've seen a lot of other membranes made of fiberglass that kind of don't look like this. Yeah. These are a little different. The problem with a fiberglass membrane is that the winding is around the z-axis. It goes in it along the, along the center and that makes the membrane fragile. And uh, it splits. And it splits. We've seen several of them split. And what we have here is we have the stainless rods on the outside so we can contain the pressure laterally. Uh, and these vessels, we have tested them to 2,000 PSI wow. without any problems. And these rods will also help with um, shocks, like an air bubble that comes through and that'll you know, kick the system. Absolutely. Doesn't our pressure regulator do something like that as well? And the pressure regulator is also a spring-loaded system. So uh, if there is a bubble that travels through the system, instead of causing a hydraulic shock, which reduces the life expectancy, uh, the life expectancy of the membranes, it gets absorbed. Some of it, most of it anyways, by the pressure regulator. But overall, this seems like a very DIY kit. It doesn't look very hard to install. If I can uh, turn a screwdriver, it looks like I got this. Um, you got this? Yeah, you just bolt the membranes down using the included uh, stainless clips. Uh, connect the hoses, follow the instructions in the manual. You'll be making water in no time. What makes the most amount, takes the most amount of time in any installation is to decide where you're going to bolt these components. Mm -hmm. Once you know where they go, the rest is just push, push to connect fittings and a uh, 5 8 wrench. And if I have any problems with my install, can I give you a call? Absolutely. We answer the phone seven days a week. Uh, our direct line is 954-800-8800 or shoot us an email at uh, info at seawaterpro.com. The same phone number is also available on WhatsApp. WhatsApp tends to be the best way to communicate. You can find the system on seawaterpro.com. Make sure you check us out and we'll see you guys out there. I hope this video answered all your questions. We have more videos available on our resources page on our website. You can call us direct at 954-800-8800. You can send us an email at info at seawaterpro.com. And of course, if you subscribe, you'll get notified for all our future videos.